Okay, guys, now we're going to take a look at chapter 16. Chapter 16 starts in your book on page 460. Um, on page 460, it introduces what we're looking at in this chapter, which is, as you can see from the title, um, calculations for special populations. What we're mainly going to look at in this chapter is um, uh, dosages by body weight. So we need to take into consideration how heavy or how light a patient may be. <clears throat> so on these types of medications, you're going to see things that say something along the lines of, and now this is just an example, but it's going to say something along the lines of, say, 10 milligrams per kilogram. We know kilogram is a weight. And so this medicine, if I use this again as just an example, is telling me that I can, or this patient can take 10 milligrams for every kilogram that they weigh. Um, most of the time this is done for pediatric patients, um, so kids. Um, so again, because we know kids are different sizes, and depending on the medication, kids that are smaller may have to take a lesser amount than kids that are a little bit larger. Uh, the same thing actually sometimes happens for geriatric patients because, you know, as kids, as their bodies are developing and growing, um, certain medications have different reactions on them, so we need to take that into consideration. And with geriatric patients, with uh, the elderly, we need to take that into consideration as their body is actually starting to change um, actually different body systems actually start to slow down with age. So different things need to happen with that. But this is what we're going to see in this chapter. Um, examples like this. And going back to the example that you guys are seeing here, um, if, I, if I use this example that says 10 milligrams per kilogram, again, like I mentioned before, that means that anybody taking this drug can take 10 milligrams for every kilogram that they weigh. Meaning, if they weighed only one kilogram, which is pretty much impossible, they would only have to take 10 milligrams of whatever this drug is. If they weighed two kilograms of weight, since they weigh double the amount of this, they're going to have to take double the amount of this, meaning they're going to take 20 milligrams. Same thing would happen if we, say, had a patient that weighed five kilograms. A person who weighs five kilograms is five times this weight, so that means they're going to have to take five times the dosage, so they're going to end up taking 50 milligrams. So you guys see where I'm going with this. That's what's going to happen um, with all these medications. But the first thing that we're going to have to do is first figure out what patients weigh in kilograms. For the most, most of the time when you guys jump on a scale, well, I mean, I guess you don't jump on a scale, but when you stand on a scale, um, whether it be at a doctor's office or a scale that you have at your house, uh, it weighs you in pounds. It doesn't weigh you in kilograms. So the first step in this chapter is going to have to be how we convert from the unit pounds to kilograms. And actually, this should be a refresher from when we went over our um, conversions earlier on in the quarter. Pounds to kilograms, that was something that we knew what we had a known for. We had a, um, an equivalent, those equivalents that I had you guys memorize. So you should know what we have, what we need to do when we're converting from pounds to kilograms. Again, we know that equivalent to be one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. That should be something that you guys are already familiar with from our equivalents from, uh, again, earlier on in the quarter. So that being said, if that is what we know as our known, there are two things that are taking place in this particular uh, type of equation. One, we had said that either you could memorize that you're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit in this particular case, and we know that because based on this known, we know that the larger unit is kilograms. Because if we only have one kilogram, and I'm going to draw a block, and we're going to call that a kilogram, if I know that this is one kilogram, Pounds must be pretty small since I can fit, let's call these blue markings pounds, one, uh, two, and then we'll just pretend that this is 0.2 up here. That one kilogram can hold 2.2 of these pounds. So pounds must be pretty small since they can fit in there. So we had memorized that if we're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, remember what we did was we divided. So in giving an example problem up here, let's just say... If I have, I don't know, a patient who's, say, 14 pounds, 
and I want to know what that is in kilograms. If you use that method, remembering that we're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, all we're going to have to do is take that 14 and divide by 2.2. So 14 divided by 2.2, which should be about 6 point something. Sorry, I need to cheat and use my calculator. 14 divided by 2.2, yep, gives us 6.36. 6.36 kilograms is what they weigh in, in kilo, I mean, I'm sorry, is what they weigh in kilograms rather than pounds. For those of you guys that were using that proportion method, um, my advice is to use that one because I think that one's a little bit easier. But for those of you guys that are using the proportion method, the setup would be this. We take our question, 14 pounds over X amount of kilograms, and set it equal to our known. And again, making sure our units match up. So I put my 2.2 pounds on the top and my 1 kilogram on the bottom. That was my known. And so when we're solving, we always multiply opposite of the x, 14 times 1, and then divide it by 2.2. We're still doing 14 divided by 2.2, and that will give me 6.36 kilograms. So whichever method you're using, no matter what, an easy way to remember this, Anytime you're converting from pounds to kilograms, all you need to do is divide by 2.2. Um, so remember, anytime, no matter what, if let's say I have a patient who's 60, let's say 60 pounds, oh, forgot the L, 60 pounds, and I want to know what that is in kilograms. Again, all I have to do is remember 60 divided by 2.2, so let me write that up here, 60 divided by 2.2, and if I do that, that gives me about 27.27, or if you guys, again, if you had rounded it to 27.3, that's fine too, um, kilograms. So that's what they weigh in kilograms. Again, this is going to come in handy when we start getting, you know, to these dosages that are asking us to make sure we have these patients in kilograms, not in pounds. Um, let's see, doing, doing just one more example. Let's say we have... Um, a patient that's, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking pediatric patients. So let's say 30 pounds. So I'm going to give you guys a second. I want you, to, you guys to try and convert that to kilograms. So work with me on this one. Again, we're taking 30 and we're dividing it by 2.2 to get that to kilograms. So in doing so, I'm just <laughs> writing it sideways here. 30 divided by 2.2 is going to give me 13, looks like 0.63 repeating. Or 13.6 is just fine too. So that's what we get in kilograms. So this is the first step to what we're doing here. So let me uh, keep going. I want to show you guys, sometimes... Um, Patients are not always weighed in just pounds, especially when we're dealing with the really small um, babies, uh, as far as pediatric patients are concerned. We need to take into consideration every amount of weight that they hold. So what I mean by that is when we have babies, we know that sometimes you know, babies are weighed as pounds and ounces. So let's say instead of just 14 pounds, which was our first example, so 14 pounds... Um, remember that converted to about 6.36 kilograms. I want you guys to see what this is. If let's say we have a patient who's 14 pounds, 8 ounces. So we're also considering, again, every ounce that they weigh because maybe this particular patient is taking a specific medication that we want to make sure they're getting everything that they need. Um, so... We are going to divide by 2.2, just as we've done before, to convert pounds to kilograms. But again, that's pounds to kilograms. How do we get this pounds and ounces to kilograms? Well, what we're going to do first is we're going to take this and convert it to a decimal. A lot of you guys are looking at this and thinking that maybe that would be 14.8 because it's 8 ounces. Instead, we have to think how many ounces make up a full pound. So we should know that it was one of our knowns or one of our equivalents from our conversion chapter. Um, and one pound was the same thing as 16 ounces. So one pound, if one pound is 16 ounces, then that means the patient that I have in front of me is actually 14 and a half or actually 14.5 pounds. 
So on that one, they're actually 14.5 pounds because we know that 8 ounces is half of 16. So in other words, 8 ounces is half of a pound. So since they're 14.5 pounds, that's the number I'm actually going to use to divide by 2.2 in order to convert that to kilograms. So when I take that, I'm just going to write a line under it to show that I'm dividing that by 2.2. This time it's 14.5 divided by 2.2. I get a little bit heavier of a kilogram weight, which is 6.59. Everybody double check to see that you get the same thing. So you can see the comparison. If these two patients that are up in front of me, and I mean two because the person who was just 14 pounds uh, compared to the person who's 14 pounds 8 ounces, since they're that extra, the extra 8 ounces, they're that extra half a pound, they're going to end up having to take a slightly, um, or a, a slight bit more of whatever that medication may be because they, they weigh more. Um, I'm going to do a couple more of those just to make sure we feel pretty comfortable with the patients who weigh both pounds and ounces. Um, so let's say this. Let's say we have a patient who weighs, I don't know, let's say 30 pounds, uh, 6 ounces. It's a little bit different. The one we did on the last example, 14 pounds, 8 ounces. 8 is kind of easy to do in your head because we know 8 is half of 16. So that's easy. We know that that's half of a pound. On this one, when we have a patient who's 14, I mean, I'm sorry, 30 pounds, 6 ounces, here's a way that we can quickly turn that into a decimal. And actually what we technically did in our head in the last example, um, what we're doing is for a brief moment, turn those ounces into a fraction. And I know you guys are thinking, oh my gosh, the fraction word. I hate the word fraction. Um, what I mean by that, look at this six ounces out of 16 for a second. Because again, it's 16 ounces that makes up a full pound. So when I have a patient who weighs something and six ounces, I look at six out of 16 out of the total amount of pounds and it looks like the fraction 6 sixteenths, and it is. But to make it even easier, convert that fraction to a decimal. So again, I'm, I'm coming back to this. I'm going to show you guys. So what we did on the last one, when the patient was 14 pounds, 8 ounces, we looked at that as 8 out of 16, which again is the same thing as the fraction 1 half if we were to reduce it. But what we can do to turn a fraction into a decimal remember, is to take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. So 8 divided by 16 gave us 14.5 in our calculator. And that was the last example, and that's what we used uh, on that one. Uh, but going back to the one that's at the top of our screen here, if I have 30 pounds, 6 ounces, what I actually have is a patient who weighs 30 point something pounds. And that's where the 6 ounces comes in. I briefly, for a moment, look at it as 6 sixteenths to show that it's 6 out of 16 ounces. And then turn that into a decimal by taking 6 divided by 16, which is going to give me 0.375. So, truthfully, this patient weighs 30.37 pounds. Or, I'm sorry, 0.375 pounds. I can then take that number... And that's the number I'm going to divide by 2.2 in order to turn it into kilograms. Once we have that decimal, it's just real easy to plug it into our calculator. 30.375 divided by 2.2. That means that this patient is 13.8, 13 13.81, 13, you know, 0.8 is just fine. Okay, let me show you guys another one. I know sometimes looking at his pounds and ounces is a little tricky. Okay, this time let's say uh, we're dealing with, let's say, a baby, a real small baby. We have a patient who weighs, let's say, 11 pounds, uh, 3 ounces. 11 pounds, 3 ounces. So again, first, first step is to look at that as a fraction, 11 pounds, 3 ounces, but first 11 and 3 sixteenths of a pound is what they technically are. So, meaning if we were to turn that into a decimal, they're 11 point something. Well, if we take 3 divided by 16, that gives us a little longer decimal, but it gives us 0.1875 in the calculator, for those of you guys who are doing that with me. Um, but it's now that number, and, and honestly, guys, if you all chose to round this, um, 
sometimes rounding is great, but you know, with this, sometimes you want to be as specific as possible when you're dealing with drugs um, and making sure that we get the patient's exact weight uh, taken into consideration there. Um, so the best number to use in this case is going to be the 11.1875. Had you have chosen to round it, I would at least have so many places after the decimal. So at least have it to like 0.19 if you're going to round it to just two places after the decimal. I wouldn't round it to a whole number. You're definitely not getting all of their weight. You're not getting the extra uh, amount of ounces. Uh, so to at least two places. But again, my, my suggestion is going to be to use all the decimals that you can because that means you're, you're um, using their specific or exact weight. Um, it's from here that we can divide this by 2.2 to figure out what that is in kilograms. So I'm going to go ahead and use the whole decimal, 11.1875 divided by 2.2. And it looks like, and again, this, this answer has a much longer decimal, uh, so this is one that we can round off a bit. So 5.1 would be just fine, or 5.09 if we're rounding it correctly. It gives us 5.085272727, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, 5.0. 0852-2727. Um, so since that's a little bit longer, that's okay to round off. But that's what they weigh in kilograms. Okay, so that's how we figure out what their weight is in kilograms. We just simply have to remember divide by 2.2. So looking at some of these example problems, how we figure this out, these problems are on, if you look, uh, this starts at the bottom of page 467, where it says dosages based on body weight. And we can flip over, that's where this starts, and it goes through some uh, explanation of how we first convert to kilograms and then, you know, some examples of what we're going to see. Go over to, the way they have it set up is kind of tricky, so I'm going to just go through some examples. Let's see, go over to page uh, 480. Take a look at page 480. 480 has a couple exercises. Um, that what we're doing on page 480 is we're determining if the medication is safe. Uh, before we get into some of the exercises on page 480, I want to show you guys um, some of the way that you may see this is again if we ha if if it says so many mil a patient can take so many milligrams per kilogram, and 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 what actually is happening on page 480 is a physician is giving us an order dose, okay? So they, they're saying we can take so many milligrams of a drug. Um, but then it's told on the label, it says that anybody taking this can take so many milligrams per kilogram. So given an example, let's say, uh, I'm going to start with a somewhat easier one. Okay, let, let's see... Um, Let's, we'll go ahead and start with number 11 there at the top, and I'll show you what's happening. So we've got a patient who's a three-day-old newborn who weighs, um, it looks like six pounds, five ounces. So I'm going to go ahead and write six pounds, five, well, that's a six, six pounds, five ounces up at the top. Um, but look, it says what's ordered is five milligrams. It says we've ordered not five milligrams per kilogram, just five milligrams. We're telling our patient to take five milligrams. Um, and it says intramuscularly every 12 hours. But let's take a look. It says what's on hand. Uh, it tells us on hand is a vial that's 20 milligrams per 2 milliliter. So if we were to do our D over H times Q formula, we could figure out exactly how many milliliters they need to take by taking 5 milligrams divided by 20 milligrams times 2. But that's not what we're doing here. We just want to determine if the doctor's order is safe. So what actually the doctor is saying is they can take 5 milligrams every 12 hours. Um, if you guys think about this, every 12 hours, that's what the abbreviation Q12H means, is every 12 hours. I'm going to actually, on a test, I would write out every 12 hours. I told you guys that medical abbreviations will just be used as extra credit. Um, so you don't have to like have that memorized or anything unless you see it and it's extra credit. Um, but... Think about the fact that we've got, you know, how many hours are in a day. So we know that there are 24 hours in a day. So if we were taking a medication every 12 hours, we would only take that medication twice in a day because, again, 24 divided by 12 is 2. 
So they can take this dose twice in an entire day. Okay, so if we're taking that dose twice, then we're going to end up taking a total of 10 milligrams, correct? On that one, we're going to end up, that's what we can take per day, each day. This is what they're getting per dose. This is what they're going to get each day. Um, but reading the rest of this label, it says, according to the package insert, a premature or full-term neonate up to one week of age may be administered up to four milligrams per kilogram per day. So this is where we take into account how heavy each patient weighs um, because the, the package is warning us that if, if somebody is, um, you know, a little bit lighter, they may not be able to take a full dose that's been ordered. So if we read that, okay, so four milligrams per kilogram. So first thing we need to do is figure out what our patient, which weigh, who weighs six pounds, five ounces, what they weigh in kilograms. So again, for a second, we just take a look at that as 5 out of 16, as the fraction 5 16th, turning that into a decimal, that's 0.3125. So actually, our patient is 6.3125 uh, pounds, but it's that number that I can then divide by 2.2 to figure out what they weigh in kilograms. And 6.3125 divided by 2.2 our patient is about 2.87 kilograms. 2.87 kilograms. All right, this screen is starting to look a little crazy, so I'm going to re remove some stuff on here. Again, we have a patient who's 2.87 kilograms. We just calculated that out. Um, again, and I'm going to also write just over here to the side, doctor told us that we could take 5 milligrams every 12 hours. Every 12 hours which is going to end up, since we every 12 hours is twice in a 24-hour day, that's going to end up being 10 milligrams per day. I'll write that down. Okay, so we'll kind of keep that into consideration here. So the warning says that they can take 4 milligrams per kilogram. So as I had mentioned earlier, if we think about that dosage, 4 milligrams per kilogram, that means a patient who weighs 1 kilogram would only have to take, could only take the 4. Uh, a patient who weighs 2 kilograms weighs double that, so they could take double the dosage. They would take 4 times 2. They could take 8. Um, so you're seeing what we're doing here. We're multiplying. Anytime you get that patient's weight in kilograms, we can multiply it by the dosage to figure out what they can take. 2.87 times 4 gives me 11.48. They can take, which means, and reading the rest of it, it said that they, that's what they could take per day. That means any patient taking this drug, or I'm sorry, any patient, yeah, can take four. Our patient, though, can take up to 11.48 milligrams each day. So meaning, according to the doctor's order, who says we're going to end up taking 10 milligrams per day, it looks like we're safe within that uh, particular, we're within that particular uh, range there. So we did determine that number 11 is safe. Um, looking at another one, kind of showing you kind of the same idea, that if let's say, um, let's see, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the second one, number 12. Okay, number 12, <laughs> okay, here's something we have to consider on number 12. So trickier, but I'm not going to give you this. I'm going to give you what they can take in milligrams. What number 12 says is we have a patient who weighs 32 pounds, but it says that they what's been ordered is one teaspoon. Okay, one teaspoon. Let's think about one teaspoon for a second, especially with how it's packaged. It says prevental syrup is two milligrams, two milligrams per five milliliters. Okay, well, if you guys think about it for a second, the physician told us they can take one teaspoon. We know that one teaspoon is the same thing as this five milliliters. So technically what the doctor ordered is only two milligrams of that drug. They ordered two milligrams of the drug. Everybody sees what I'm talking about. Um, it comes packaged as two milligrams per five milliliters, meaning the same thing as two milligrams per one teaspoon. So since our doctor ordered only one teaspoon, this is technically the dosage that's been ordered, just two milligrams. Okay, 
hope everybody's following along with me on that one. They've only ordered two milligrams. So that being said, looking at the rest of the problem, it says according to the package insert for children two to six years of age, which is our patient because he or she is four, dosing should be initiated at 0 0.1. Well, let me, uh, let me actually use a different color pen here. That green doesn't show up very well. Um, at 0 0.1 milligrams per kilogram of body weight three times a day. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, and, I say, and I say three times a day, but that's also what's been ordered is three, three times a day. But let's look at what our patient weighs. Our patient weighs 32 pounds. So let's put the body weight down here, 32 pounds. So we need to figure out first, what is that in kilograms? So 32 pounds divided by 2.2. There's no ounces, so we don't have to look at it as a fraction first. 32 divided by 2.2 is 14.54. Or 14, I guess it would be 55 if we're rounding it correctly. 14.55 kilograms. Okay, so if that says that we can take 0.1 milligrams per kilogram, our patient weighs 14.55 times that amount. So we're going to take 14.55, our patient's weight in kilograms, and multiply it by that 0.1. When we do so, we get about 1 point, let me make sure I did this right, 14.55 times 0.1, I did, we get 1.455 which means our patient, because they weigh 32 pounds, can take 1.455, or just rounding it up to 1.5 would just be fine. They can take one and a half milligrams of drug. They can take about one and a half milligrams of that drug. Well, what was ordered? Only two milligrams, or actually two milligrams. So we went over. If you guys think about that, this, this label says that they can take only 0.1 milligrams per each kilogram. So since our patient's a little bit heavier, we multiply that out, it means our patient can only take 1.455, or like I said, about one and a half. Doctor's order went over. We went, we're taking a little bit too much of that medication since they, he had only ordered the uh, two. All right, let's take a look at another one. Okay. Let's see. Uh, number 13 is a range. I'm not going to give you guys a range. Um, all right, let's actually take a look at the next page, and let's take a look at number 19. On number 19, it says that we have a patient, a four-month-old girl who weighs 12 pounds. So, again, we have a patient who weighs 12 pounds, it says that this patient needs to take erythromycin suspension 65 milligrams by mouth every 12 hours. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the every 12 hours because that's relevant. Um, on hand, it says erythromycin oral suspension. Uh, it tells us the dosage if we need to calculate the dosage calculation there. But we want to figure out if this is a safe order. So it says according to the package insert, the following are usual dosages for children over 3 years of age. Um, it says either 25 milligrams per kilogram per day in equally divided doses every 12 hours or 20 milligram, milligrams per kilogram per day in divided doses every 8 hours. So obviously since our patient was told that they could take it every 12 hours, we need to look at that range. It says that they can take 25 milligrams per kilogram per day in every 12 hours. So that's what, that's what our patient was, take, was told. Um, so let's see, if our patient weighs 12 pounds, remember what we need to do is first take 12 pounds, divide it by 2.2 to figure out what they weigh in kilograms. So when we do so, we get uh, 5.45 kilograms. So to figure out if this is safe, we, we multiply by the range. Our patient weighs 4.45 times the, the weight, so they can take that amount uh, times the dosage. So 4.45 times, I'm sorry, 5.45 times 25. Our patient can take up to 136.25 milligrams each day um, every 12 hours. And again, the order dose was 65, 
So it looks like our patient falls uh, within a safe range. We're clearly in a very safe range. Okay, so on the final, you may see some questions that look uh, very similar to that, where I'm asking if the doctor's order fits within that safe um, dosage on the, on, according to the label. So one's just like this. Another thing that you may see, you're probably going to see more of ones like this, though, where I'm going to give you some questions, and these are going to be ones that you'll see as you guys get into your pharmacology classes, some of your more advanced NPN classes, um, ones like this that says, um, let's just say uh, we have a patient who's, let's say, I don't know, let's say 35 pounds. Um, then what has been ordered... So these are a little bit easier in my opinion, and that's why you're going to see a little bit more than these. You're going to see the ordered says that um, patients can take, let's say I'm going to use 10 milligrams per, oh, that's supposed to be a P, per kilogram. Sorry about that. So, they, so then they can take 10 milligrams per kilogram. Um, but then we have um, what's listed. So these are gonna, gonna these are just gonna relate to our dosage calculations that we did last week. Um, but it says have we have um, let's say two hundred milligrams per milliliter. Sorry, this handwriting's terrible. Um, okay. So again, this is going to end up being a D over H times Q formula, but instead of just taking 10 divided by 200 times 1, as we would have last week, we need to incorporate the weight. So we have a patient who's 35 pounds, so in figuring out what our patient weighs in kilograms, as usual, we're going to take 35 divided by 2.2. We have a patient who's 15.9 kilograms. So they weigh technically 15.9 times this amount. So we'll take 15.9 times this amount to see what our patient can take. 15.9 times 10 gives us 159. This is going to end up being some weird decimal. They can take 159 milligrams. But I want to know, my question is going to say, what do we need to give? How many milliliters? So it just becomes a D over H times Q formula. 159 milligrams divided by what we have, the dosage that we have, times one milliliter. So like I said, this is going to end up being some weird decimal. But 159 divided by 200 times one gives us 0.795. So we'll just call that about zero, yeah, 0 0.8 milliliters is what this patient can take. Let me give you another one and show you, you know, again, it's just going to end up you know, it's very similar to our, to our D over H times Q, so it makes it very familiar to us from what we took on today's quiz and what we did in last, the last class. Um, but it's just taking that weight into consideration. So if we have, say, a patient that's, let's say, 15 pounds, uh, let's say 6 ounces, and then we have our usual, our order, our question is going to be order, have, and then we need to know what to give. Okay, so of this medicine, let's say we have, uh, hang on, I'm trying to think what would be good. Let's say we have what's ordered, um, let's say four milligrams per kilogram okay but what we have is a medication that is let's say I don't know let's just say five milligrams per two milliliters okay so again this just becomes a D over H times Q formula and we just need to calculate what our patient needs to take first um, because the medication is based on their weight. So first, as usual, we need to figure out what they weigh in kilograms. So we know that they're going to be 15 point something kilograms, um, but we just take 6 divided by 16. They are 15.375 pounds. We take that divided by 2.2. 15.375 divided by 2.2. They are about, let's say, 6 
Oh, this one's 6.99, so they're pretty close to 7. We'll just go ahead and... That one's one that you probably could go ahead and round up to 7, but we'll just go ahead and call it 6.99 kilograms. So they weigh 6.99, or almost 7 times the amount of weight that this medication is telling me. They can take 4 milligrams for every 1 kilogram. And they weigh, again, they weigh about 7 times that amount. So what we need to do is just take the 4 milligrams... Multiply it by our weight. I'll go ahead and use the 6.99. Uh, that gives us 27.96, um, which is again is so close to 28. We'll we'll just call it an even 28, um, which was what we would be what would it would be if it was seven kilograms times four. Um, so this person can take 28 milligrams. That's what's been ordered because it's based on their on each patient's weight. Um, so we take 28. Um, and then put it into dosage calculation here. So here's what we have times 2 milliliters. So, our, so we take 28 divided by 5 times 2 gives us, they can take 11.2 milliliters. So that being said, any other patient taking this drug would be able to take a different amount if this was the ordered dose. Um, so if we were to just say we've got the same thing, hold on, let me get rid of all this. We've got the same thing going on here. If we have what's been ordered, and I'll just write order, again, same drug, four milligrams per kilogram is what that says. What we have is a drug that was five milligrams per every oh it was two milliliters so what do we need to give this time that let's say the patient weighs uh, let's say it's a larger patient who weighs 40 pounds okay so we know that they're definitely going to be able to take a whole lot more so we can figure out exactly how much more by taking 40 divided by 2.2 first to figure out what they weigh in kilograms looks like they weigh 18.18 .18 kilograms um, so to figure out what they can take is what we're going to put into our D over H times Q formula. We're going to take 18.18, .18, our weight, times the dosage, which is 4. They can take 72.7 milligrams. Um, so we put that into the dosage calculation. I'm actually going to rewrite this over here. 72.7 milligrams. That's a point. Over... 5 milligrams is our dosage times our quantity. So we take 72.7, oops, type that in wrong, 72.7 divided by 5 times 2 tells me that my patient can take about 29.08 milliliters. So all these are, are just dosage calculations, but instead of just um, an ordered dose being given to us, we're having to consider their weight. So that's what we're looking at here. I hope that helps guys. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me at any point um, and I will get back to you as fast as I can. And again, I will definitely be there to answer any questions that you guys may have uh, prior to the final. All right guys, thank you.